Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a discussion about the 2020 season of spring anime. I've already recorded this once, but then I realized that my microphone was not picking up audio. So I just uh, talked to myself for like 20 minutes. And I was very happy at the end of that. Let me tell you what. Anyway, today we will be discussing summertime rendering. One of the last ones we have to talk about. We'll have one more video after this one of a discussion about a couple of cuckoos. But for now, we're going to be focusing on summertime render or summertime rendering, whichever you prefer. This is an interesting mystery supernatural kind of show. Um, honestly, I was not expecting to have happen what happened in the show. Right? It also kind of reminds me of uh, Anohana. You know, the, uh, the show where there's like this group of friends who... In childhood, one of their friends dies and they drift apart, but then the main character starts seeing the ghost of their young friend who died, and they get the gang back together and all that. Kind of reminded me of that. Very vaguely, though. Uh, kind of in the sense, because the main character in this show, Summertime Rendering, uh, his name is Shinpei, he's returning back to his home island because his uh, friend or sister kind of died. Uh, the blonde-haired girl is one who died. The main character is the black-haired one in the middle there. Uh, anyway, his sister Ushiro, or U Ushio, sorry, died. I say sister, but... So his parents died when he was young, like 10 years old. And so Ushio, the Ufune family, they uh, basically took him in. And so he's kind of like, yep, sister... I guess is what you would call it. But I don't know if he's like officially adopted by them. You know what I mean? Because he still goes by his last name, Hachiro. Regardless, he's going back to town for his uh, sister Ushio's death. And there he meets his other sister, Mio. And they go to the funeral. And all this you know, stuff kind of goes on. But in the beginning... He has this dream about Ushio telling him to protect Mio. And it seems kind of odd to me because they haven't seen each other for two years. And he has this dream and it looks like she is, well, the same age she should be, like, if she were still alive today. You know, it seems kind of odd. So whatever, they go to the funeral go through that, and he finds out from his friend, the one with the, uh, the nail gun there, that she might have been murdered because she went into the water to save this young girl named Shiori who had gotten swept away by the uh, current or something. And so Ushio saves Shiori, however, then dies herself. But the thing is, his friend is the son of the, like, doctor, coroner in the town, whatever you want to say. And his father found strangulation marks around Ushio's neck. So that's why it seems like it could be potential murder. But the town police just write it off and say it was an accidental death. You know, because they were all like, well, we were the only ones there. There's no way someone else could have been out there. Blah, 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 all this stuff, right? Um, even his friend is like, yeah, we were out there, like, just the four of us. Uh, him, the Shiori girl, and the two sisters. And, like, no one else was around for miles. They were at a beach that only, like, the locals knew about and all this stuff. So, you know, weird, right? But uh, anyway, so that, that happens. And then they're all sad and stuff. He gets more details and all that. Then they go to a diner, and we hear like a drunk customer talking to Shinpei about how he saw him earlier that morning, asking about this like big breasted woman, and Shinpei's like, what are you talking about? I didn't see you until today, right? And then the, uh, the officer, the only officer in this town comes in and, you know, gets his food and whatnot, and he starts talking about how this young girl, Shiori, how her entire family went missing, 
Their store did not open up, so the neighbors got concerned and called, and when he went to investigate, apparently all of their furniture and all their possessions are just gone from their house. So when Mew hears this, or Mio, sorry, her name's not Mew, it's Mio. When Mio hears this, she runs out of the restaurant to their, like, home, I guess, to investigate, and so Shinpei follows after her, right? And in doing so, they come across uh, an old man, or like an old hunter, essentially, who overhears them talking about the fact that uh, Mio heard from Shiori that she had seen like a, like a doppelganger of herself in the forest one day, and that they had also seen a doppelganger of Lucio three days before they died. And it's kind of weird, and the hunter's like, oh, that's the shadow. Yep. Legends say that if you see your doppelganger, you're going to die shortly after, and then after you die, it'll get the rest of your family too. The only way to prevent it is to go to the shrine and get purified, essentially. Right? And so they're like, well, I guess we're going to the shrine. So they go to the shrine, but they find it locked. And then Mew, God damn it, Mio, sorry, I have a character named Mew, so it's just easier to say. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, Mio sees this figure off in the woods and says something to Shinpei, who he doesn't see it, but they're just like, it. she says that it looked like Shiori, so they go chase after the figure. They, of course, find nothing. However, while in the woods, they hear a gunshot. And so they go to the gunshot, which, uh, personally, I would have been like, oh, it's probably just the hunter, whatever, right? Because uh, he was carrying a gun and heading towards the woods himself. Regardless... When they follow the gunshot, they find that a black-haired woman on the left shot and leaning up against a tree. She's still, like, alive, though. And so, uh, essentially what happens, Shinpei leans down and, like, she starts to say something to him. But then she gets shot in the head. And so Shinpei turns around and sees that a doppelganger of Mio is holding Mio with a gun to Mio's head. And after Shinpei says something real quick, the real Mio, allegedly, gets shot in the head, and then the doppelganger, doppel, doppelganger Mio points the gun at Shinpei and shoots him in the head, and they all die. And then Shinpei wakes back up on the boat before the funeral happened. Oh, yeah. It's one of those looping shows, like ReZero, apparently. That's my guess from the first episode. I don't know if it's going to keep happening, but that was my uh, interpretation of events currently. I'm assuming if they're going to do it once, it's going to happen again. Like, it feels like the sort of thing where they'll do it again, right? But just a lot of stuff happens in the first episode that's just like, okay, I'm in. I will watch this show. I thought it was pretty cool, so I think I'm going to definitely check it out. But, uh, yeah, so we don't know if it is actually, like, a murderer who's going around killing people and, like, is just good at disguising themselves. Like, they're disguising themselves as Ushio, Mio, and Shiori, and whatnot. Or if it is actually the work of some supernatural shapeshifter who can take on uh, other people's forms and do stuff right. But if that is the case, if it is some supernatural being, why would it use a gun to kill them? You know? Kind of weird. And also, who's the lady in black? Why is she wearing all black? She has, like, boots on, and she has black gloves on. And we also overhear her say some, like, weird stuff into a phone that we only hear like a partial conversation of. That seems really sketchy. And why was she out in the woods? Why did she get shot? All questions that we need answered. But also on top of that, there's the police officer who's the only police officer in the town who was like, yeah, this is just an accident. Writes the whole thing off, even though there's strangulation marks around Ushio's throat. Not only that, but after telling that story to Mio, and both Mio and Shinpei run out of the restaurant. 
we see a shot of the police officer making a dissatisfied face and clicking his tongue. So it seems like he doesn't like them or something. And so it's very interesting, right? Because could it have been something like, because uh, we do see that the, the police officer was looking at like pornography on his phone when Shinpei was trying to take his order. So was it something weird like Ushio had confronted the police officer when he was trying to like assault Shiori maybe or something like that? So the police officer killed her and threatened Shiori and that's why Shiori is like shocked and can't talk and like barely reacting and all this stuff. And is that why everyone else who might have had some inkling about it died? Is he working with other people? I mean, if he's the only police officer in town, if there's any criminals, all he would have to do is buy him off, you know? There's just so many things that could happen. It could be supernatural. It could be just a crime organization kind of thing going on. It could be just a police officer being a dickbag. Um, all kind of things happening. It could all be like a dream. Like Shinpei is just dreaming this whole thing. And we're going to find out on episode 25 that he wakes up back on the boat, goes to the funeral, and uh, that's all there is to it. And then nothing happens after that, you know? It's all just him uh, having a dream within a dream within a dream. Exception style, you know? But who's to say? I don't know. Also, I want to point this out because I thought it was hilarious when I saw it. So I paused the, uh, the show on a frame of like a close-up on Shinpei's face. And when I did that, I realized that he looks exactly like Kirito from Sword Art Online. Except uh, he has a little bit longer of hair and he has a like, blue right eye. But his left eye is black. And he's got the same like front haircut that Kirito basically has. It's like the straight like black hair that's kind of like parted on both sides but has like a, a bunch in the middle you know and seeing it from that angle i was like yeah that's kirito like i even pulled up a picture to kirito compared him and i was like yep that's kirito i covered up one side of his face with a blue eye and i was like yep that's kirito <laughs> but i mean kirito is just a generic black haired teenager right like there's nothing really special about his uh, design or anything like that. The only thing that really makes his design stand out is his like uh, dual wielding and his uh, his outfits, right? And other than that, if you like just take him and copy paste him into any other anime, he'd fit in just fine, you know. All there is to that. But uh, yeah, this one's gonna be a good show. I can already tell. Like, hmm. It started out as a little bit weird with like the dream thing happening where he was like uh, talking to Ushio, you know. And then it got, okay, so it's going to just be him going to a funeral and, you know, whatnot. And then we found out about Shadow Creature. And then everyone died. Then he woke up on the boat again. And I was like, oh, okay, well, shit. Should have escalated quickly. So, my question is, is it going to be like a re-zero kind of situation where he retains all of his memories and tries to do things in the optimal situation in order to save everyone else and figure out what's going on? Or is it a Higurashi kind of situation where they're not going to remember what's happening and we're going to go through like different world like uh, world lines or whatever you want to call it. Different versions of the world, I guess. And each time something different is going to happen. You know? Is there some force that's working against him? Perhaps it's like a... Uh, uh, shit. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Uh, an Umi Nico sort of 
situation where you got the uh, the supernatural witch on one side, and you have the logical uh, battler on the other. You have the real and the fake magic and reality colliding to decide which is which. Will Shinpei be trying to find out a reasonable, logical situation? Or is he going to embrace the supernatural things that he's being told and go down that route of trying to find out what the supernatural thing is? Or is he going to try to figure out what exactly is acting like a supernatural force, you know? Hell, it even takes place on an island that's, like, fairly remote and, like, small, like uh, Rokujima or whatever the Uminiko island is called. So it's kind of fitting, I think. Kind of cool. But anyway, I am excited for this show. It's definitely not, like, my number one this season, but it, it's up there, maybe top five. I'm definitely interested on seeing where it's going to go. So... That'll be all for me for now, everyone. Until next time, when we have our last discussion about uh, a couple of cuckoos, which should be a okay show. It's going to be interesting. I started reading the manga for that one a little bit. But uh, I don't remember if I dropped it because I thought it was kind of cringy or just because it wasn't like really up to my speed or what. But I do remember reading some of it. So... We will pick up then. And I think it's coming out next week-ish or something. Or the week after. I forget. It's, it's going to be like at least another week, I think. So until then, thank you all for listening. Catch you next time. Bye for now.